Events are being hosted across all of our branches, created by library partners, community members, and library staff. We want to thank TD and the Ready Commitment for their continued support. And you can share your African Heritage Photo moments on Twitter and Instagram with the hashtag AHM2023. So, or at Hellfest Pub Lib, or with TD at TD underscore Canada. So, now, Ladies and gentlemen, this promises to be a wonderful event, so I want you all to settle in and be prepared because I'm going to now bring out our illustrious guest. So you could all come out. Ladies and gentlemen, George Elliott Clark presents Five Poets Breaking into Song. Black History Month, happy African Heritage Month. Um, I'm feeling the joy, I'm feeling the bliss, and we're all going to be hearing some wonderful music and song uh, composed by Patrick Navon and performed by Holly Arsenal at the keyboard. <laughs> Linda Carvery handling all the vocals. And uh, I'm George Elliott Clark, your very humble host. I'm so happy that, that uh, Halifax Public Libraries asked me to put together this incredible group of poets uh, and with Devon, our, our great composer, uh, to put together this program for us this afternoon. So uh, the program will work this way. Uh, I will introduce each poet. Uh, who will then read for approximately seven minutes. Uh, and then the last poem or a couple of poems that they will recite will be the pieces that Navon has set to music. And then, of course, we will ask Linda and Holly to perform that piece or pieces. Uh, and, and then we will engage in a little bit of banter back and forth and so on before we invite the next poet up to uh, the podium to recite. Uh, one of the poets is unable to be with us uh, right here, physically present today, and that's uh, Amateur Ritziro Edi. Uh, he's on his way to a poetry festival in Burkina Faso. Um, but he is, we hope, uh, at least temporarily going to be stopped over in Toronto. So if it's possible to find a connection in Pearson, <laughs> if it's possible, the airport where you do not want to pass through because your luggage is definitely going to disappear. Definitely, um, and, and so on. But if he's able to get that connection, then we'll have him zoom in with us at some point in the program as well. So without any further ado, I will uh, introduce uh, Dr. Afua Cooper, celebrated poet. Spoken word icon. Author, scholar, and historian. Her many books range across the genres of poetry, history, fiction, and children's lit. She's as the Poet Laureate of the Halifax Regional Municipality for the 2018-2020 term. She's a founder of the Canadian Dub Poetry Movement, a recipient of numerous prizes and awards, including the Portia White Prize, <laughs> the, the J.M. Abraham Atlantic Poetry Prize, the Bob Marley Award. It's all, that's, it's all good. Um, and also a finalist for the Governor General's Literary uh, Prize. There is so much more here that I could say, but I know that you are eager to hear her uh, recite her work and then hear uh, Navon's uh, brilliant composition uh, for her uh, uh, poetry. So I'm going to invite Dr. 
Afua Cooper up to the podium. Thank you, George, for such a warm welcome and for inviting me to be part of this presentation, this African Heritage Month poetry presentation. It's always wonderful to be um, in the realm of the spoken word. Um, and thanks to the other panelists and perhaps the biggest thanks to all of you for coming out to, to participate in this event. So we have seven minutes and I respect time. <laughs> Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Ya Rab. So this poem is called, I Breathe My Breath Into Him. And it was um, written after George Floyd was murdered. And I link him to Emmett Till, the boy, the kid, 14 years old, who was murdered in 1955 um, in Mississippi. And, you know, it, it hasn't stopped. It really hasn't stopped. Before Emmett Till, after Emmett Till, after George Floyd. Um, ch or children are killed. Or motherhood fractured. Mothers and fathers and families are left to mourn all the time from the moment we stepped off that first slave ship in the Americas. Mamie Till said she had a, an open casket for her child Emmett, the 14-year-old boy who was murdered in Mississippi by white men in 1955. She said she had an open casket because she wanted the world to see what they had done to her beautiful son. Emmett's face twisted, his body disfigured. My son is the sacrificial lamb. And there were so many like him. Patrice Lumumba, Amilcar Cabral, the Central Park Five, Amadou Jallo, Sandra Bland, Junior Alexander Manand, Anthony Griffith, Fred Hampton, Wailing shall be in the streets, Afina Shakur. And now you, George Floyd, African lion from Mampruseland, great, great child of Soninke, running from the cotton fields of the south to the ice flows of Minneapolis, wailing shall be in the streets, Call out the wailers, sound the morning drums, mystic revelation, mystic revelation, Nyabingi drummers, throw the ashes on our heads. Woman, tie your belly with the morning cloth, tie your belly and ball, tie up your womb, tie up your womb that connects you to God. Wailing shall be in the streets. Woman, ban your belly and ball. Weep in a loud voice, wailing shall be in the streets. Ball the dirge, wail, mammy, till wail, beat the drums of sorrow. Do doom 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 wail, mommy, wail. Our elephant has fallen. Send the message on the talking drum. Sound the a bang. Wail, woman, wail. The earth is in labor. And the Quran 1529. When I fashioned him and breathed my breath into him, and Genesis 2, 7, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and made him a living being. Breathe, George Floyd, breathe, 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 breathe. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Thank you. More on children. These children, babies, infants, 
They're recorded in the Book of Negroes, General Guy Carlton's military register as they left New York Harbor in 1783, between May and November 1783, as they sailed to different places, including Nova Scotia. So some of these children, they might have been babies at the breast, but their names were not recorded. Instead, this is what the scribe wrote. Child of Venus, child of Sarah, child of Hagar, child of Chloe, child of Peggy, child of Patty, child of Dinah, child of Thomas, child of Betsy, child of Mary, child of Guinea, child of Few, child of Prince, child of Warner, child of Abigail, child of Cooper, child of Allen, child of Violet, child of David, child of Westcott, child of Willoughby, child of Effie, child of Caesar, child of Century, child of Isabella, child of Lucinda, oh, here is the child of Jupiter, child of Gambia, child of Campbell, child of Johnson, child of Watson, child of William, child of Bing, child of Tynes, oh dear sweet, sweet baby, child of mine, child of mine, child of mine, I love you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I need to introduce you. I haven't done that yet, so here it is. All right, so Holly Arsenault, uh, since returning to her native Nova Scotia from Montreal's jazz scene in 2008, pianist, composer Holly Arsenault has enjoyed collaboration with Halifax's finest jazz musicians, Symphony Nova Scotia, and all kinds of artists in between, and her eponymous trio was twice named Best Jazz Artist Band in the Coast Reader's Choice Awards. Yeah. Her latest project as leader, the Jazz Hands Antiviral Playlist, is available now on Bandcamp. And for Linda Carvery, former president of the award-winning Nova Scotia Mass Choir, Linda embarked on a solo career recording her first CD yesterday today. She was awarded the East Coast Music Award for Best Jazz Artist and has since been recognized by the African Nova Scotia Music Association with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Linda has since expanded, oh yes, oh yes. She has since expanded her musical horizons by performing in the Neptune Theater productions of the musicals Gospel at Colonus and Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. She also performed the Eastern Front Theater's production of a play called Lila Falls, uh, and which also had some performances at the National Arts Center in Ottawa. And I also want to introduce the composer uh, now, and that is, of course, Navon Patrick. Uh, <laughs> bachelor of Music, CD, from Ajax, Ontario, is a classically trained trombonist, graduating from the University of Toronto. In 1996, he joined the Canadian Armed Forces, becoming a member of the Static Kona Band, up in the game of that band in Halifax in 2004. Since Moving to Halifax, he's performed with several local groups, including Symphony Nova Scotia. His debut as a composer came in 2021 with the marvelous For My Country, inspired by the number two construction battalion, Canada's only black battalion. For this, Navon was presented recently with the commander of the Canadian Army Commendation and Queen Elizabeth II Platinum Jubilee Medal. <laughs> Navon. He lives in Halifax with his wife, Michelle, who remains his greatest source of motivation, encouragement, and support. And I'm also going to ask you one more time for one more round of applause with the amazing, for the amazing, Afua Cooper. Ch 
child of Venus. Child of Sarah. Child of Hagar. Child of Chloe. And yes, child of Peggy. Child of Patty. Child of Dinah. Child of Thomas. Child of Betsy. Child of Mary. And child of Guinea. Child of Few. Child of Prince. Child of Abigail. Child of Warner. Child of Cooper. Child of Allen. Child of Violet. Child of David. Gambia, child of Campbell, child of Johnson, and don't forget child of Watson, and there, and there was and there was child of Williams, child of Bing. Magnificent, magnificent performance of a tremendous, moving, plangent composition, Nivon. So um, I'll just I'll start by just asking, and we'll, we'll all be brief. But but um, how how did you get to that melody? What what made you come up with that? Sir, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I wanted to write a, a requiem. I wanted to write something that was. Thank <laughs> you. 
technology rules the day. <laughs> All right, I'll make this brief. I wanted to write a requiem for parents who had lost children. I wrote a piece, and when I played it for my wife, she said, <laughs> you're not going to perform that. So I had to write something different. What I came up with was what you just heard, and there are lots of phrases in there where they're sort of incomplete. There are lots of phrases where you can hear the community coming together, you can hear a parent um, mourning in one corner, a child crying out in another corner. Um, that piece was probably the hardest one to write, and not because it was necessarily um, difficult to come up with a, with a theme, it was because I was thinking about children everywhere, and as Linda pointed out um, a couple of days ago in rehearsal, you know, it's still happening, children are being lost, and, and if we take a minute just to recognize um, the sacrifice, the hurt, the pain, the hardships that parents go through when a child is, is because you're not supposed to lose your child. So hopefully I was able to convey the message of the poet, Dr. Cooper, while having some musical um, substance. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Um, I am going to invite uh, Afua to respond uh, to this uh, uh, performance. Dr. Cooper. Thank you, sir, for the lovely music. I mean, when George first sent it to me uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think last year, actually, I phoned him and I said, this is, this is just so tremendous. It was so moving, um, so thoughtful, and conveyed the, the sentiment that I felt, um, even though we hadn't met, we hadn't spoken, when I went through the list. Of, um, in, in the book of Negroes. So uh, Linda, just tremendously fabulous. Thank you so much. Brought tears to my eyes. Um, your voice is beautiful. Thank you again for it. Yeah, um, you know, oftentimes when, when we're doing this work, we, we have children. Uh, sometimes we, but when we think of um, enslavement, we really don't think sometimes that children were part of it. In fact, as the, the so-called slave trade drew to a close, the majority of people who were kidnapped and transported from Africa to the New World were children. You know, there were cargoes that had 50% of kids. And when I say children, I mean like from toddlers right up to someone who could 15 or 16. So um, we think of Phyllis Wheatley. As I was sitting there, I thought of Phyllis Wheatley, who we considered to be the mother of black literature in the Western Hemisphere. She was eight or nine when she was thrown on a, a ship from the Gambia or Senegal and landed in Boston, sick, tired, dying, really. And so sick she was that they threw her in the corner of the slave market because they said, well, no one is gonna buy her, she's too sick. Um, she's just gonna die. And so it the, was this cavalier attitude towards black people, towards black children, that we're objects, we're, we're commodities, we're there for the enjoyment of um, white people. And when that enjoyment didn't seem that it was gonna happen, then you could be just discarded and thrown away. Fortunately for Philly, somebody uh, bought her for one dollar and we, and we stand on her shoulders today because she became this tremendous, wonderful poet. So thank you, uh, Madame Pianist. That was just wonderful. Thank you, it touched my heart, your melodies. Uh, Owen, do we have a, do we have a connection with Ama Edi, Ama Twitzero Edi yet? No. Okay. All right. So we will. Um, we're ho still hoping that we'll be able to, to uh, have him appear, uh, but uh, we will continue with the program. Uh, so it is my great pleasure, and delight, and honor uh, to 
introduce, um, I'm about to introduce uh, another uh, Haligonian poet laureate, but before I do that, I just need to send a shout out to my great, fabulous sister uh, of, of jurisprudence and governance, and I'm talking about the Honorable May Ann Francis. <laughs> Thank you, man. And I also want to mention a couple other Confederates very quickly. Gilbert Randall Day, the Right Honorable. And Ms. Jacqueline Barkley. So um, thank you for allowing me to, to, to do that. Now I am going to introduce the fabulous, the one and only, L. Jones. Spoken word poet, journalist, community activist. She is an assistant professor at, at Mount St. Vincent University's Department of Political Studies, served as the Nancy's Chair of Women's Studies for the 2017-2019 term. She is the author of Live from the African Resistance. Her most recent book, Abolitionist Intimacies, was released from Fernwood Press in November 2022. Al was the fifth uh, Poet Laureate uh, of Halifax. In 2016, she received the Burnley Rocky Jones Human Rights Award for her community work and her work in prison justice. She is a co-founder of the Black Power Hour, a live radio show with people who have experienced incarceration. That program appears on CKDU. It creates space for people inside to share their creative work and discuss contemporary social and political issues without any further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. L. Jones. Good evening, peace every, oh, afternoon actually, we're not at evening yet. Good afternoon, peace everybody, say peace back to me. Peace. All right. Um, what was so interesting about this poem being chosen by Navon is I think this is my most George Eliot Clark poem. <laughs> like, the rhythm in it is pure George, so I guess there was some going back and forth. So this is Police Brutality Bingo. It's a game that anyone can play. It's on at least three times a day from Florida to Toronto. It's Police Brutality Bingo. It's in both official tongues. Montreal cops got guns. Just tune into the news, any channel will do. Twitter and your Facebook page, and if black people don't want to engage, you can comment without an intro. Police brutality, bingo. So let's review the lingo, police brutality, bingo. There's so many ways you can win, as long as you have white skin. If you're ready, we can begin. Just fill the reasons in, B1 must have run, I2, what did she do, N3 shouldn't sell CDs, G4, reach through the door, O5, it's their fault, they're not alive, bingo, they're not alive. He had something that looked like a knife, should have carried the gun down the aisle, should not have played with the BB outside. Well, he didn't look like a child. You can play the columns or the rows, police brutality, bingo. Well, he had a wide set nose, should not have worn those clothes, should not have worn that hoodie, should have shown her ID, should have kept her hands in sight. Shouldn't have asked for her rights. Was probably suicide. Shouldn't have been in that cell. The body cameras will tell. Oops, seems they were erased. Sorry, the footage misplaced. Shouldn't have reached for your phone. Whatever you did, you should have known. Must have done something the tape cut out. Benefit of the doubt, even if the police were in the wrong, only idiots don't play along. Should have shown respect. What do you expect? And on and on it goes, police brutality, bingo. We can go for the whole card. The police job is so hard. Shouldn't have stolen cigars. Shouldn't have been in that car. He's been pulled over many times. Shouldn't have committed those crimes. I always do what I'm told and I'm stopped. Hashtag all lives matter. Hashtag not all cops. Should have fixed his taillight. Shouldn't speed when you drive. If their parents had raised them right, it's their fault they're not alive. It's their fault they're not alive. Then misuse a Martin Luther King quote, police brutality, bingo. From the bottom of the car to the top. How dare you demand no cops? 
Just wait till you need to call. The number of violent cops is so small. It's not the United States. We don't have the same problems with race. Shouldn't be ruining my commute. Can't support you with that attitude. White people just want to have a conversation. Seems like you just want segregation. Seems like you're the real racist. Why can't you just quietly sit? It's not the place or the time. Why don't you address black crime? You shoot each other in Toronto. Police brutality, bingo. White people, you can teach your kids. It must be something that they did. There's always something you can prove. Did they reach or did they move? Were their hands up? Did they freeze? Were they on their back or knees? Well, then they're threatening, you know, police brutality, bingo. You can get both diagonals. Shouldn't be acting like animals. They're just trying to sue for the damages. His body was strong like a savage is. In the middle, it's a free square. The criminal record goes there. It's always good for a smear. You can always rely on white fear. You can always call in a threat. Think how many squares you can get. He was reading suspiciously long. Must be doing something wrong. Just didn't look like they belong. Better call 911. Nothing to do with me though, police brutality, bingo. Whole family can join in the fun. You can pass your racism on. And that's how the cycle runs. It's a game that's never done. You can hang your card on the fridge. Free square, white privilege. You can put them back when you're bored. Turn off the news report. Put black people out of your mind until you're ready to play next time. That was such a long time ago. It's time to move on, you know. And that's how this whole thing goes. Police brutality, bingo. <laughs> actually the final poem in my book. Interestingly, those are actually part of a secret series, which was taking either games or other things that were like lighthearted and changing them to be about state violence. So this is a reworking of the poem Good Night Moon. Do you know that poem by Margaret Wise Brown, which is actually, it turns out, uh, was 75 years when my book was published. So, In a provincial jail, there's a little room with a toilet and a sink and a smell of mildew and a slit of a window with a sliver of the moon and a radio on a shelf playing a tune and a metal cot and a metal slot and a night that's either too cold or too hot and an officer in the spot by the stairs and three more guards sitting in chairs and the shadow of the laws that put people in there and the eye of the camera watching you sitting, and a photocopied picture of your mother and children, and a heart with a hole for the loved ones you're missing, and restless dreams when you wake up shivering, and a door with a lock, and a window with bars, and a corner of the sky showing just one star, and a comb, and a brush, and a brush that won't flush, and a guard on his rounds, ordering, hush. So good night, room, like a little tomb. Good night, window, barely showing the moon. Good night, laws that aren't changing soon. Good night, radio. Good night, news. Good night, cot. Good night, slot. Good night, down in solitary where the world forgot. Good night, sheep tied up in a knot. Good night, bad dreams and regretful thoughts. Good night, clanging doors and the camera shots. Good night, locks. Good night, clocks. Good night, countdown to the day you get out of the box. Good night, mildew. Good night, mold. Good night, lights on all night down in the hole. Good night, heart with its little hole. Good night, heat. Good night, cold. Good night, foam mattress. Good night, comb. Good night to the crumpled picture of home. Good night, dripping sink. And toilet that won't flush. And good night to the officers ordering hush. Good night, patrol. 
Good night, stair. Good night, outside. Good night, air. Good night, love. Good night, care. Good night, prisoners everywhere. Thank you. provincial jail there's a little room with a toilet and a sink and a smell of mildew and a slit of a window with a sliver of the moon and a radio on a shelf playing a tune and a metal cot and a metal slot and a night that's either too hot or too cold and an officer in the spot by the stairs and three more guards sitting in chairs and the shadow of the laws that put people in there. In the eye of the camera watching you sitting in a photocopy picture of your mother and children and a heart with the hole for the loved ones you're missing and restless dreams where you wake up shivering and a door with a lock and a window with bars and a corner of the sky showing just one star and a comb and a brush and a toilet that won't flush and a guard on his rounds ordering hush. So good night, room like a little tomb. A good night, window barely showing the moon. Good night, laws that aren't changing soon. Good night, radio. Good night, news. Good night, cot. Good night, slot. Good night, down in solitary where the world forgot. Good night, sheets tied up in a knot. Good night, bad dreams and regretful thoughts. Good night, clanging doors and the camera shut. that won't flush and good night to the officer ordering hush. good night patrol 
Good night, Stair. Good night, outside. Good night, air. Good night, love. Good night, care. Good night, prisoners everywhere. Thank you so much. Now, I just want to let you know I don't play bingo myself. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm going to give it a try tonight. See how it goes. So, let's review the lingo of police brutality bingo. Well, there's so many ways you can win. As long as you have white skin, if you're ready, we can begin. Just fill the reasons in. Must have run. I too, what did she do? And three shouldn't sell CDs. G4 reached through the door. Oh, five, it's their fault they're not alive. Woo! Bingo, they're not alive. Well, he had a white set nose. Shouldn't have worn those clothes. Shouldn't have worn that hoodie. Should have shown her ID. Should have kept her hands in sight. Shouldn't have asked for her rights. Was probably suicide. Shouldn't have been in that cell. The body cameras will tell. Oops. Seems they were erased. Sorry, the footage misplaced. Shouldn't have reached for your phone. Whatever you do, you should have known. Mm. Wrong. Je 
just didn't look like they belong. Better call 911. Nothing to do with me, though. I said, nothing to do with me, though. Nothing, nothing to do with me, though. Peace, mortality, bingo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I couldn't have done that better myself. <laughs> wow. Give it up for the ladies once, once again, please. <laughs> so to answer your question, George, um, you know, my biggest challenge was staying away from other people's copyrighted material. <laughs> it's pretty hard to do in music, but if you took everybody in this room and say, go out and make a tune, you'd all come up with something different. So mm -hmm. um, the second biggest challenge for me was portraying, conveying the message of the poets while remembering that I have an audience here. And you folks came to see a music show. And you had to leave. I want you to leave at the end of this show feeling uplifted, maybe educated, maybe enlightened, but still entertained. And I think. Thank you to both of you for that amazing performance. Um, what's interesting is when I first started doing poetry, I actually don't like performing, and I didn't know how to do it. So I used to just stand at the mic and like hold it. So all my poems were just like straight ahead because I was like, okay, I can't perform, I can't do anything else, so I'm just gonna scream at people. So, <laughs> I, so I was also like, Zzz. and then as I like learned to perform more, I found you know, and then I could play with my voice and stuff more. So what's really interesting is it actually is a playfulness in like police brutality bingo it's supposed to be sort of laughing and making fun of all the stuff that people say to us but about a very serious topic mm -hmm. and i think people always think i'm you know so serious like when they meet me they're all surprised that i'm not just like you know like constantly um so yeah so I, I just really like how it brought out the really playful side of what's actually going on the wordplay the and and so i was able to capture something that i always feel is in the work but sometimes people don't hear because of the topics and you know who i am i guess so that was really nice to hear. And then with Goodnight Jail, same thing. Like you always hear your own voice when you're doing something. Um, so it wasn't the choice I'd have made at all. And I was a bit surprised when I first heard it um, because I was like, oh, but I thought of this as like a lullaby and it's sort of ending my book. But then to hear this really interesting choice that brought these different dynamics in, right? So that saying goodnight can be calming. It can be also like uplifting. It can be a laugh, it can be, so like taking that, whereas I had done it in sort of one note to give it all those different kind of ways that saying good night to somebody can end, like your night can end on so many different notes, like depending on your mood, and I thought that you really captured that sense of going back and forth, so that was, so both, it was such an interesting choice, and I heard it differently, so thank you so much, Navon, and Linda, I mean, if I had known you, would say, of course I'd have picked bingo if I, like, knowing it was you, so. <laughs> That was just a fantastic performance, so thank you.
want to follow Nivan by saying that yes, uh, we are being entertained, we are being enlightened, uh, we are being prompted towards greater degrees of solidarity through harmony. Solidarity through harmony. Music is justice. Oh, I, music is justice. The final world. Plato was wrong to try to try to throw the poets out of his republic, but again, it was a fascist tyranny anyway. He was all wrong, because we know music is justice. Music brings justice, poetry brings justice. That's what we're hearing here today. So it's my great, pl um, let me just check with Owen, do we have Amma? We do, we have Amma. Are you able to bring him up on, this, on the screen? He somehow has survived landing in Pearson. Now I'm not gonna talk about his luggage. That, I, you know, but if he gets to Burkina Faso with his luggage, God is with him. God is with him. <laughs> it's, cer it's certainly not Air Canada or anybody else. Um, um, because of the magic of technology, as Nivon has also been exploring uh, some of his comments earlier, uh, we're unable to um, uh, hear uh, Amma when we are able to hear each other. So we have to do this kind of mute and unmute dance because he's on, on Zoom. But I will now go ahead and introduce him. And then Owen, our fabulous technician, will bring uh, Amma up live for us so we can hear him uh, recite his poetry. Uh, and then, of course, we'll, we'll hear the song. So Amatort Zero Edie has published a collection of nonfiction essays, Imagination's Many Rooms, which is present uh, uh, with the bookmark table, and also three poetry collections, A Writer's Pains and Caribbean Blues, Globetrotter and Hitler's Children from 2009, and Teardrops on the, on the Vaser, 2021. His debut won the All Africa Okigbo Prize. I said the All Africa Okigbo Prize, 1998. He was also nominated for the Nigerian Literature Prize, 2013. In 2004, he won second prize, the first German Mayhem Award. He appears in 15 anthologies globally. Globally, <laughs> crying out loud. Edie is, is also a scholar and assistant professor of English at Mount Allison University and publishes the Maple Tree Literary Supplement, MTLS, which you can find at www.mtls.ca. Uh, he is also uh, a, a, a trained uh, Hindu priest uh, and, and uh, uh, as a refugee from Nigeria when it was under a dictatorship, he also uh, made a home in Germany uh, for a while, but now he is here and he's at Pearson Airport, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Amateur Zero, Edie. Can, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. I'm reading from uh, this collection. Look for that and eat us children. So I'm going to read the, the, the uh, section that's been scored into music. Thank you, uh, Iran. It's section D. It says, What does the endless North American sky reveal? Like those sex workers in Amsterdam's love quarters. She says simply, I'm wide open. So the streetcar becomes a tram in slow phallic rush on Lamba Mirevoort in the Hague, flirting foolishly with the horizon. The red light flashes where there are no red light districts. The streetcar stops to gaze at lovers struggling down the avenue, down Dundas, heavy with love and its weight. So Eaton Center, where hearts pump more round from the fondling and folding of love scars. That's about it. So we will now hear uh, what the Endless North American Sky Reveals, a fabulous poem, uh, which I'm really happy to have, to have heard uh, Emma Tortero, uh, uh recite for us. 
Uh, it's a poem that brings together the African diaspora th into Europe and, of course, into North America. So um, uh, let's uh, hear uh, the song. <laughs> What does the endless North American sky reveal? Like those sex workers in Amsterdam's love quarters, she says simply, I am wide open. So the streetcar becomes a tram in slow, fairly rush. American sky reveal. You tell me. Oh, thank you. Uh, Owen, is Ama still there? No, he's is he he's gone. All right, well, um, uh, he's still there. Is it Oh, all right, excellent. <laughs> so, Owen, he can, he can hear me right now, right? Okay, great. All right, so, um, uh, Ama, we're going to do a little bit of bantering, uh, and, and then we'll uh, allow you to, to speak. Actually, we're going to allow you to speak right now, but I'm going to ask a question. Uh, because you can hear me, right? So I'm going to ask this question, um, which is, how do you feel about hearing this song? Okay, uh, is that helpful? Could you speak to the mic? I didn't hear the question. All right, I've been told, okay. Uh, so I'm speaking into the mic, and I'm, and I'm just asking you, um, uh, Ama Tortsiro, how does it feel? How do you feel to hear uh, your words? Um, I can hear you. I can hear you, George. 
Uh, okay. Uh, I can't do the chat. <laughs> uh, Amma, okay. Amma, I am asking you how you feel about hearing your song. Uh, and, and that's all. That's, that's what I'm asking. Uh, if you're able to hear that question. I can't, I didn't hear you. Type into the chat. Okay. Okay, you can repeat the question now. Okay. How do you feel about hearing your song? I do not hear you. This is, uh, let me try and get on. I don't know the question you asked. So, probably, are you asking me how I came about composing, you know, writing this point? Yes. <laughs> I didn't hear any question. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, is that all right? Can you, uh, I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Okay. Travel well. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with the. No, no, it's not. The light over there. It's a technology. Don't worry. Okay. Um, but we. we yeah. oh, thank you, Amma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's well. All. Uh, Thank you, Owen, uh, for the, the valiant effort, and also I thank Amma in his absence for the equally valiant effort to be with us. Uh, of course, uh, we can uh, still ask uh, Nivon uh, to comment on, on the piece, uh, because it is kind of like postmodern poetry, so a little bit uh, different kind of thing to relate to. And, and I also want to ask uh, Linda and Holly uh, to respond as you, as you wish uh, to um, uh, any of the performances so far, uh, as well as perhaps also uh, Amos. So, all right, uh, Nivon. Do you guys remember being in school and having debate club? I feel like that's what's happening here right now. <laughs> so they say that necessity is the mother of invention. I think that the fear of failure must be its grandmother. <laughs> Um, that tune has a lot of sass. <laughs> um, it's a little bit cheeky. I enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed writing all of these tunes, um, but you can see where I got a little bit tongue-in-cheek with that one. Uh, there's a lot of imagery that comes out. Um, I, I, love, uh, <laughs> I love what the ladies did with it because it's, um, that's exactly what I wrote. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't talk much, George, so I won't be long. <laughs> I just want to say that um, I was so honored to be a part of this. And I have to, I have to tell you something that uh, George said during our first correspondence. He ended by saying, I assume you can read music. <laughs> well, what I didn't tell him. <laughs> I said, first of all, I said, how you doing, George? I hope you're, you know, having a good day and all. But your assumption is wrong. I can't read a lick of music, but I got a good ear. And if that's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. And if not, you have yourself a good day. <laughs> as, as
as I was saying, it's entertainment plus edification. <laughs> I, I've, I've been edified. Edified in a most sanctified way. <laughs> Testifying, too. Hi, everybody. Um, first of all, thank you so very, very much, George, and thank you to all of you for um, extending the invitation for me to be on the All-Star team. It's, it's just been, it's been a very profound experience, and Navon, I know I say this every, we've been rehearsing for weeks, and there's a big love fest, which makes the rehearsal go on like a half hour longer than it should, but what I love about what Navon has done is that he has come up with the essence of things. And he was very clear from the outset that Linda and I were to make the tunes our own. And that's such a rare and beautiful thing in a composer, especially one who writes so musically, which you think would be it's, it's a lot rarer than you think in our, in our community. Uh, but anyway, um, just uh, beyond honored to be here. And um, I just hope in my, in my way I'm uh, serving the tunes with justice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The, uh, next poet doesn't really require much of a, of a introduction, uh, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, Ms. Dr. Sylvia D. Hamilton. I, I, I gotta add professor as well. Is an award-winning Nova Scotian artist known for her documentaries, Portia White, Think on Me. The, yes, yes, amen. The Little Black Schoolhouse. And Black Mother, Black Daughter. Ms. Professor Dr. Hamilton has uh, her first collection of poetry, and I alone escaped to tell you, which was shortlisted for a League of Canadian Poets Award, and was a finalist for the Nova Scotia Masterworks Award. Her newest poetry collection, Tender, was launched recently. It has just come out. It's available at uh, Bookmark's fabulous uh, table with its great collection of the absolute best writing available in this library today, <laughs> just to say so. Sylvia Hamilton is the recipient of the Nova Scotia Portia White Prize and the 2019 Governor General's History Award for Popular Media. She is the English uh, professor at the University of King's College right here in Halifax. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Beachville, all the way from the Annapolis Valley, Sylvia D. Hamilton. Okay, microphone down first. Okay, we got someone. At least I don't have to stand on an apple box. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Um, thank you, George, and hello, everyone. Hello, thank you. 
what a pleasure to be here. I'm going to, uh, and thanks to my predecessors, Al and Ahua, and of course, Navan and Linda and Holly, what a, I'm just sitting here enjoying this, so, so thank you. I'm going to read three pieces, uh, including the poem that Navan um, created as a piece of music. Uh, Tender, my new book. I'm going to read a piece called Thursday Forever African. Thursday first appeared in An I, Lo An I Alone Escape to Tell You. Young girl who self-liberated, she was enslaved by a man named, I won't give you his name, his name isn't important. Thursday escaped and she was uh, found re-enslaved and left in a will. I always wonder what happened to Thursday. She's been walking with me for a long time. So I've created a new world for her, and the first poem I'm reading is about Thursday from her point of view. Thursday, forever African, once called Thursday of Gull Island, 1772. She descend over rocks flat and jagged. Some say she fly with the gull. Some say that whale wait for her just offshore. One, I secreted away from Gull Island, baptized myself Thursday Forever African, a new name borrowed from Forever Bay, sheltered and protected there. With me, two daughters and a son, I tell none how or from where. To myself a promise, no man would oversee my body ever again. Cursed him when he laughed and said, here, take this, you'll never see her again. I kissed a blood vow on this, my mother's severed braid. I hide in the indigo pouch tucked beneath my breast. The raft I fashioned from discarded limbs scavenged from behind Paradise Baptist at nightfall by the stars, silent as a snake, artful, a small cabin swathed in evergreen lashed on top, shelter from the pending storm, a respite from the sun, my ever-present foe. Raindrops feathered my shoulders. I remembered when black took over the sky. My body cooled, my foe like me in hiding. I not awake, no time for dreaming. Keep watch, keep watch, keep watch. Mm -hmm. Two, with spirits pressed at my back, I moved on solid air, spit upon by God. Strangers in the streets of Pointe Pietre changed paths to follow me. They couldn't say why. Children knew, trailing behind, gathering my imaginings like fireflies trapped and glowing in a jar. What I remember, what you forget. I am my own country. Three, exactly 10 years later to the day, I floated in on the north wind, wrapped in my shawl, I adorned with seashells, salt water pearls, white sand. Why should I care for conventions or respectability? Look at me. My gray braid as long as the ages, my shoulders broad. No one dares to ask, who in God's holy name are you? Mm -hmm. I ignore their stares, their whispers. For soon they will know who I am. They will wonder who they are, mm -hmm. who they will become. I know.
Thank you, thank you. This is called Waiting for God. One, walking in Shelburne where the graveyard sits eyeing the courthouse, where the Anglican church looks from the other side of the road, come to worship, leave to serve, in paradise or hell, who can choose? Job asks, shall we accept good from God and not adversity? Here are the dust cake children of Palestine digging in the rubble to find grandma's book of stories, the baby doll and carriage, the old football, the radio. They look to God asking where is our state of grace? In Chibuk, Nigeria, a father sits clutching his daughter's torn picture. He wept like they say Jesus did. John 11.35, shortest verse in the Bible. Why did they steal his girl? He yearns for her to be alive in the Sambisa forest beside his bed on a line page torn from her scribbler. He printed her name, repeats it in a whisper till sleep overtakes him. He will not eat, his wife says. Sunrise, he sits on a small three-legged chair stationed outside the door. Last night, he called a truce, went to bed, made peace with death. Two, what if I told you I died this morning, what if I could have stopped them from finding her? What if she vanished, gone, gone to her imagined place? Awake and dreaming this morning, 70 Chibok girls released, but not to their families. Patience urged blunt government handlers. A weeping sister longs for her mother's song, her body an exposed nerve, too tender to touch, and the girls, aged beyond their childhood years, have their menses returned? Do they braid each other's hair, sitting cross-legged on the grass? Do they trade clothes and flip-flops? Do they run to hug each other in the August rains? Their girlhood laughter, when will it return? Three. We were young together, once standing alone against the sky. Which side of the road do you want to be on, you asked, the history side or the other? Which side of the road are you on, do you want to be on? Four, wait until that bend where the roads meet at the switchback. Sure, it's never easy, I said. Let us not compare atrocities. Let us not be consumed by guilt. Let us press our faces to wounds of history. Let us open our hearts to songs of justice, to never-ending words of peace. Thank you. And this is the piece that Nivan very kindly scored. The term overseer, for some of you who may not know, that term refers specifically to those people who were overseeing enslaved African people, so that their job was to watch them constantly. So this poem is called The New Overseers, A Dirge. They're still watching, waiting to vex us. Can't sell my water when it's hot. Can't mow lawns for my summer job. Can't have a family barbecue in the park. Can't take a nap in my dorm lounge. Can't wait for my colleague at the coffee shop. Can't move my things to my car from the Airbnb. Can't play golf at my own club. Can't do my job selling real estate. Can't complete my firefighter's report. Can't go on a wine tour with my sister friends. Can't sell papers on my newspaper route. Can't have a midnight snack at the Denny's in Lethbridge. 
can't buy a meal for an elder at the A&W in Cardston, can't sell candy at a fundraiser, can't buy prom clothes at Nordstrom, can't swim in my community pool, can't shoot my music video in the park, can't use coupons at the CVS, can't eat lunch and read at Smith College, can't help the homeless in Mountain View, can't bird watch in Central Park, can't breathe, can't be black. Thank you. They're still watching, waiting to vex us. Can't sell my water when it's hard. Can't mow lawns for my summer job. Can't have a family barbecue in a park. Can't take a nap in my dorm lounge. Can't wait for my colleague at the coffee shop. Can't move my things to my car from the Airbnb. Can't play golf at my own club. Can't do my job selling real estate. Can't complete my firefighter's report. Can't go on a wine tour with my sister friends. Can't sell papers on my newspaper route. Can't have a midnight snack at the Denny's in Lethbridge. Can't buy a meal for an elder at the A&W in Cardston. Can't sell candy as a fundraiser. Can't buy prom clothes at Nordstrom. Can't swim in my community pool. Can't shoot my music video in the park. Coupons at the CVS. Can't eat lunch and read at Smith College. Can't even feed the homeless in Mountain View. Can't bird watch in Central Park. Can't breathe. I just feel like I'm like I'm hearing Nina Simone uh, in the house.
uh, so powerful, so powerful. <laughs> and and I, as I think of Sylvia Hamilton's poem, I'm reminded of all of the, the litany of can'ts. You can't do this, can't do that, without being considered a suspect uh, in one way, shape, or form, or another. And that is the, the burden that we continue to carry that some citizens are prepared to consider other citizens as perpetual suspects, perpetual suspects, and to have our freedom, and have our freedom inhibited, prohibited, hobbled, uh, uh, all the time, no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter what we've achieved. And so that is why it's so important that we celebrate African heritage, that we celebrate black people, that we celebrate African Canadians, Arcadians. I don't want to have to be saying I can't go to the Walmart in Halifax without being harassed, without being accused, without being stopped. I want to be able to say, I don't want to have to continue to say that I can't go to my local shopper's drug mart without having somebody try and jump in front of me as I'm exiting the store, trying to think that I took something when I could have bought that security guard 50 times over. Thank you, University of Toronto, for the salary. Thank you. Um, so I, I know this is supposed to be the banter part, the ad lib part. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get on with that. So um, Navon, uh, please. I have no words for it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's your that's your final answer. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Sylvia, would you like to uh, respond to this performance? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Holly. Nivon, thank you. I, I mean, you said no words. I say no words. Um, when I wrote this piece, I thought a lot about the idea of the, the ties, like that your your black body being constrained, being tied, because you can't move here or there, you know, anywhere you move. And so that notion of can't, you know, simply was there. But having the beauty of Linda's voice uh, speak that, sing that for me, um, just um, wonderful gave my heart uh, a moment to rise, a moment to say, in fact, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you. Yes, we can. Thank you. Monica Mutali. <laughs> is a graduate of the School of Journalism at the University of King's College. And that is not a simple thing, because to be any kind of journalist, as Sylvia Hamilton also knows, is to be responsible to the truth. No matter who is upset by it, no matter who is perhaps injured by it, but the truth will always set us free. Amen. So she has worked as a freelance journalist, has profiled Olympic athletes, award-winning musicians, and also reported on injustice in the education system. A former student and community leader, I'm not... She may be a former student, but she still is a community leader. She has a passion for volunteering. She has contributed her skills to the nonprofit sector in both communications and leadership capacities. 
Ms. Mutali has always had a passion for creative writing, has been writing poetry since the age of 12, is committed to, to getting music as justice onto paper. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Monica Mutali. Thank you, George, and hello, everyone. Um, it's really exciting to be here, but I am very nervous. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, it's, a real, it's a real honor to be in the company of such wonderful poets and such lovely human beings, people over here. And uh, as George said, I've been writing since a very young age. I've, I've always had a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions, a lot going on on the inside. And I, I just needed an outlet to um, express all of those feelings, uh, even if nobody ever, ever saw what I wrote. Um, but to have some of my words immortalized in song is, is really incredible. So I'm just going to read a few pieces here. Let's try and ease myself into this. So the first one is called Among Roses. His words were always like daggers to my chest. How fitting, therefore, that we should end like this. Sweet words can drip like honey from the tongue. From his, nothing but poison ever came. He left me neither singer nor song, for half notes scattered at the sound of his name. Some lovers trail rose petals in their wake, dust your eyelids with kisses at the dawn of new day. Roses at his sight would wither and break. When he stood, ashes covered the place where he lay. I speak as if he's just a thing of my past, but he's not, he's my present, my here and my now. That's why at this moment my heart beats so fast with his knife to my chest and me wondering how. With me pick asking myself, why did I stay and not pick myself up and fly me away? Well, I from the sun. It kept bringing new day. Perhaps I'd have known if it had stayed away. If the sun did not rise, did not rise for one day, I might have stopped thinking we'd still be OK. I might be among roses, kissed with the new day, and not here in the ashes in the place where he lay. Thank you. There's actually a line in there that's inspired by one of George Eliot Clark's poems, so, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one is called The Book of We. Walk with me back to a day in the past. Listen to the sound of a heart beating fast. Hope tries to fight fear as two eyes look around as two ears hear new sounds and two feet walk new ground. And two hands cling tightly to a mother's coat as suitcases are tossed from the side of a coach. And new life begins in a land they don't know, where footsteps are buried in layers of snow. Among these strange people, their coats lined with fur, this child searched for someone who looked just like her. But nowhere could she find just one friendly face. And slowly she began to feel out of place. It worsened as they tried to assimilate and were ridiculed for the food on their plates, for the clothes on their backs and the scarves on their heads, for the curious sound of the words that they said. In school, it seemed her history was not of concern. So she lowered her eyes and of others she learned. Her history books weighed heavy on her desk. She flipped through white pages and she wrote white tests. And the books never changed, the same whens, the same whos, same crises, same heroes, the same world, the same news. So the child let her mother tongue slip away until she could no longer recall it one day. And though her face always revealed her descent, she was proud you could just barely hear her accent. And she said, mommy, take the beads out of my hair because she wanted it straight to her mother's despair. And though nappy was not a word she understood, something inside her said it wasn't good. So she devoted her energy to fitting in. And as she grew older, that meant being thin. 
At home, where she came from, a woman took pride in the curve of her hips and the size of her thighs. But here she'd wake up and she'd sweat in the dark and burn off her beauty in jogs through the park. One day, she began a journey of self-truth. As she started to feel drawn back to her roots, she wanted to speak her own language again and tried to embrace it like a long lost friend. But it was gone and refused to come back. So she bought a ticket and her bags she packed. And she flew over red dirt and grassy plains to grab hold of her language and her history reclaim. But they smirked when she couldn't wash laundry with stones. And they whispered that she had no meat on her bones. She smiled politely as they moved their lips. For their words were like Egyptian hieroglyphs. They rolled their eyes, seeing that she couldn't pound maize. And it became too much. She left after nine days. As she flew, she remembered a day in the past and recalled the sound of her heart beating fast. And the feeling returned with a force big and strong. And she felt once again that she didn't belong. She'd given up herself to fit in in one place. And though she feared that it might be too late, she worked slowly to gain back what she'd thrown away and made it her mission always to say, you're special to each child that she came across so that no one would have to lose what she had lost. And this story is not new. It's just one of many of the tales of the people who fail to see that diversity is beauty disguised and acceptance should not be looked at as a prize or something for which we should have to fight, but it should be treated as everyone's right. So this is more than just the story of she, the story of them, or the story of me. This one person's life and her struggle to be is a page in the book in the story of we. This last piece is called Ebony's Winter, and it's a short one. Kiss my cheek and hold me tight. Walk with me into the night. Watch the snowflakes drape the land. Watch them melt upon my hand. Warm my fingers with your own. Kiss me like we were alone. Still my worries, wants, and whys. Cast them deep into the skies. Let them stay there till sunrise. Let me kiss your frozen lips. Give your lips a frozen kiss. Leave the memory of me on your skin of ebony. Watch the crystal words we share rise, secrets, into the air. With a thousand kisses kissed, moments missed, and whispers wisp, watch the sun bring golden day. Turn with me and float away. Thank you. Kiss my cheek and hold me tight Walk with me into the night Watch the snowflakes drape the land Watch them melt upon my hand my fingers with your own kiss me like we were alone still my worries wants and wise cast them deep into the skies let them stay there till sunrise Watch 
Touch the crystal words we share, rise secrets into the air. With a thousand kisses, kiss, moments miss, and whispers whiz. Watch the sun bring golden days, turn with me and float. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> Where do we go from here? <laughs> well, first, first we're going to hear from Monica and, and her response uh, to this fabulous performance. Uh, I, I, I gotta get, I'm tired of saying fabulous because it's just, it's not, it, it's not rich enough. It, it's not a big enough word. It, it's like a super califragilistic expialidocious. <laughs> Great, you know, we're crying out loud. I gotta go, I gotta go there. Um, and, and, uh, and, I, and I do want to ask Monica, uh, uh, if you don't mind, to, to come back and tell us what this was like. And especially, you started off writing songs. Right? I, I, th I think it's the best way to get into poetry is, is writing songs. So, all right, um, please. I was hoping to get away with not having to do the banter, but apparently <laughs> not. Um, yeah, so I did start out writing, you know, little songs in my, in my, my journal when I was, was quite young, and I was always a really creative person from, from a very, very young age. I, I wrote a lot, did a lot of creative writing, a lot of drawing, and like I said, I just had a lot of feelings. I was a very shy, quiet, you know, child with a lot of feelings. Now I'm a shy, quiet adult with a lot of feelings. <laughs> and um, I've always loved music, so this is really special, and I was saying to Navon, you know, thank you again for the wonderful song, but also just seeing the score that I received in the mail was a really just surreal and special moment for me. So um, I don't know what else I can say. Uh, yeah, it's really wonderful. Yvonne, did you want to add? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Um, I will say briefly that um, the story of We was a very close second to um, Ebony's Winter. Um, I had an idea for something in 5.8. We'll work on that afterwards. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Um, we have sort of come towards the conclusion of our program. Uh, this afternoon. Um, uh, there's still one more piece uh, to be performed. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's to something that I wrote. So I'm very curious to know what Navon has chosen uh, and to hear the treatment that Holly and Linda will give that piece. Uh, but while I have this, this moment, um, I also want to express my great thanks to the Halifax Public Libraries, yeah. to, um, um, the, the uh, uh, colleagues uh, at the library I was most privileged to work with, uh, Ms. Cheryl Black, who's uh, responsible for adult regional programming uh, for the library, and Crystal Mulder, uh, who's here uh, and has been assisting powerfully today. I happened to see a headline in yesterday's Chronicle Herald or Mail Star, whichever one it might have been, about uh, the need for the library to have its funding uh, preserved and enhanced. Um, and so I want to throw my long distance support behind, behind that wish, understanding that libraries are part of the real arsenal of democracy to use that World War II propaganda idea. Uh, but they are, because libraries are the place where we come to think and dream and debate ideas uh, and to imagine other possibilities, improvements on the society we have now, and, and, and to receive warning about the possibilities of, 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 of uh, 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 tyrannies, tyrannies that could result. So 
Uh, the library is probably one of the most important investments that the people can ever make in themselves, along with public health, along with health care, uh, and neither of the two, and education, of course. And none of these should ever be shortchanged by any government, and I just speak as a citizen and in no other capacity than that. Um, so um, I, I want to also uh, thank you all for coming out, uh, and of course for the poets. Uh, and uh, I will turn everything over to Navon and Holly and Linda. First of and, all, I um, need, to, I need to bring huge, a bottle of rum out. A huge thank you to George Elliott Clark. <laughs> Um, George doesn't know anything about this, but today's his birthday. Yes, yes, yes. We got him a birthday card, and everybody signed it. So, happy We got some? Okay, good. I hear myself now. Do we have one more performance? We got we one more song that has to do okay. with rum. <laughs> let's hear it. What, let, and let's, that's let's, why we brought the rum bottle load here today. To <laughs> let's bring this on home. Creeps and I can't wait 
Oh, why should love hesitate? I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. Miss Rosen with tide, silk and stars on the other side. I can't love, I've never tried. Too afraid of being double crossed. Cool rain and rum. Love takes a long time to come. Feels like I'm a long way from ever having some. Ever having some. I wonder what he's talking about. Ever having some. I don't know. Ever having some. What were you talking about anyway in that poem? That's what I'd like to know. You tell me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ali Arsenal, my girl. Yeah. Has this been an afternoon or what? <laughs> Woo! All right, before I release all of you, two things. One, the bookmark has books here for sale. I'm sure we, with a little convincing we can get the authors to sign. The other thing is I have a little surprise for all of you. I have a gift bag for each and Every former here today, and I'm going to start with the composer, Mr. Navon Patrick. <laughs> Two musical performers for Linda Carvey and Harley Arsenal. I have a gift for the. And now, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> that's how we, that's how we do it. <laughs> now, for our poets, the inspirations for this afternoon. I'm going to call you up in seating order, Dr. Fuller Cooper. An old friend, she won't tell you this, but she gave me one of my first history jobs. Dr. Sylvia Hamilton. Yes. <laughs> Young lady, we have to talk about getting you published. We seriously do. Monica Mutali. What's it to say? The inimitable L. Jones. <laughs> and certainly, last but not least, the mastermind behind this whole program, the one, the only, the great. Africanian educator, Dr. George Elliott Clark. I want to thank you all for coming out this afternoon. We appreciate it. We, we appreciate you. Please.
Okay, before I do this, one last time, let's have our poets and our musicians join together. And can we have a round of applause for five poets breaking into song? for coming out this afternoon. Please feel free to, uh, to uh, visit the Halifax Public website, Halifax Public Library's website for further programming for this month. And thank you all, we appreciate you. Please go buy a book. Go buy a book. I told you earlier, they take cash, they take debit, they take credit. Fingers, arms and legs, and any other body part you're willing to give up. But go get a book. Thank you very much for coming out. <laughs>